Genetic diseases are, although they are considered rare, but every practitioner will see them. Like uh, if you see practice of pediatrics, then almost 30% of pediatric admissions are known to be of genetic origin. So, although we feel that genetic diseases are rare, every practitioner is going to come across them. But it's a question whether you suspect them and if you suspect them, then you will be able to diagnose them. Well, the common misconception is that uh, genetic diseases do not have treatment, so why do we need to diagnose them? But most important about uh, treating or managing a patient is that you should be able to help the patient. So when we come across a genetic disease, the first step is about diagnosing the condition. Now, the importance of diagnosing the condition is that the parents get a correct answer what is the problem with their child this is very important they go from doctor to doctor not understanding what is happening with their child so getting a correct diagnosis helps them it puts an end to their odc secondly once we know the correct diagnosis we can try and predict what is likely to happen in future what complications can happen and we can try to prevent those complications at the same time although we cannot treat the full disorder small small aspects of that disorder like if there is a visual problem we can treat that visual problem if there is a cardiac defect we can operate the cardiac defect so in piecemeal we can try and help the family although we cannot treat the whole disorder another most important thing about diagnosing these rare conditions is that many of these rare conditions being genetic in origin there is a chance of recurrence in the next child so again the family has to go through the same odc about treating the various complications. So, if we know the correct diagnosis, then we can do prenatal diagnosis. We can prevent birth of another child with the same disease in that family. As well as we can screen other family members so that the first child itself is prevented from having these genetic disorders. So, lysosomal disorder, storage disorders are a group of these genetic diseases. About 40 of them are known and they also form a group of disorders where many of the pediatricians will come across them but if you don't detect the correct type of lysosomal storage disease then we cannot do prenatal diagnosis. So it is very important to have a correct diagnosis for doing prenatal diagnosis and genetic counselling for the family. So the lysosomal storage disorders are diagnosed by enzyme assay. Enzyme assay is considered as the gold standard for diagnosis of lysosomal storage disorders. These enzyme assays have a lot of uh, disadvantages, one of them being that carriers cannot be diagnosed by enzyme assay and the reason for this is that there is a high degree of overlap of the enzyme activity between a carrier and a normal individual. So you can easily differentiate using the enzyme assay a affected person and a normal person but a carrier and a normal person cannot be differentiated very accurately using an enzyme assay. So that's why for carrier analysis, it is always preferred to do a molecular analysis. So molecular analysis is very important in diagnosing the lysosomal storage disorders for confirmation of diagnosis after the enzyme assay, for carrier analysis, as well as for prenatal diagnosis. Next generation sequencing is a type of sequencing which has thoroughly revolutionized the field of genetic diagnostics. So why do we call this as next generation sequencing? So the initial sequencing platforms that were available, that is the Sanger sequencing, we can only sequence up to maybe 1000 base pairs of the human genome. But if you want to look for a large number of mutations or if you want to screen large genes, then we cannot do it by Sanger sequencing. So the next generation sequencing technologies allow us to sequence large number of genes at a time so that we can sequence either all the known genes for that disorder or you can sequence a whole exome that is all coding region or even whole genome that is the total genome of humans. So in this way next generation sequencing is able to provide us much cheaper diagnostic potential compared to the earlier Sanger sequencing. 
but it has its own problems. So next generation sequencing, first of all, uh, it is very important to be able to interpret the results. So in next generation sequencing, we end up getting a lot of variants called as variant of unknown significance. So whenever a doctor orders for a next generation sequencing, you may either get a pathogenic variant, a benign variant or a variant of unknown significance. Now benign variant is easy to interpret, it is a normal variant present in the population. A pathogenic variant is a variant which is known to cause a disease and hence we can give a report saying that the variant is responsible for the disease. However, many times we get this third type of variant called a variant of unknown significance and this is a biggest challenging aspect of next generation sequencing where interpretation of this variant of unknown significance is very important to tell the family that this is we cannot be sure that this is the variant which is causing the disease so more evidence is needed at the same time you have to clinically correlate with the phenotype and then only report so it is very important that interpretation of next generation sequencing results in a done is done in a proper way so that it is able to help the families so we have a large number of uh, databases of normal individuals throughout the world so the database of genomes of normal individuals is important because when you find a variant in the next generation sequencing, you want to find whether it is a disease causing variant or a benign variant. Now to identify benign variant, we need to have a database of normal individuals in that particular population. At present, there are a large number of population databases like the 1000 genome or the genome AD or the exec, which are all having patients or uh, uh, individuals who are from the Caucasian origin or the uh, Asian origin but we have very few representation of Indian genomes in these databases. We cannot, we need to have a representative Indian population so that we can interpret the results based on the next generation sequencing. At present the problem is that when you go to interpret the results we compare the frequency of variants with the Caucasian population and that sometimes causes problems. So it is very important that we should have a Indian genome database which will help in interpretation of the NGS analysis. Thank you.